Okay, okay thematic coding. Um, I call it thematic coding because in a sense, what you're looking for, the code, is, is major thematic ideas in the text. Um, and you can code a variety of things as themes, but in the end, what you're trying to get from it is those important, those central, those, you know, actually crucial themes that somehow explain what's going on in the data. Um, but you can code anything, just about, as, as we'll see in a moment. <coughs> Under this heading, um, I have suggested come all these kinds of methods. Um, grounded theory, I'm going to be talking about in a late, later lecture. Um, I think it'll be two weeks time, I think, yes. Um, I'll talk about Benjamin Strauss and, and the others who use grounded theory. What I'm talking about today is very close to grounded theory, but there are one or two extra bits I'll talk about uh, in that session. But also, around the thematic code, I include Jonathan Smith's interpretive phenomenological analysis, um, a, a uh, psychological approach, but it essentially is a coding approach. Although it does have some um, aspects of um, other methods built into it, particularly the iterative approach it takes, as does template analysis of that as well, an iterative approach, the, the move from single cases to other cases and so on. Um, and framework analysis, uh, Richie and Lewis in their books on the read list, um, they also have uh, a, a effectively a, a thematic coding approach to, uh, to, to analysis. So these are some of the names of the, the major approach. Well, there are others too. I mean, I should mention how Becker is one of the originators of the coding approach. He doesn't actually give his method a name, it's just analysis in his book. But how Becker, who started the whole thing rolling, around about the same time as Bertrand Stiles wrote the grand theory. So all of these are thematic analysis approaches. They all have that common idea of reading the text, finding passages that are about the same thing or represent the same thing, and writing a code against it, and then using that to analyze the data. Okay, how's coding done? Um, again, another new bit. Um, a, a quick exercise to um, just sh show you what it looks like. And those of you who've done work with Nigel will be familiar with already, nothing new here at all, at all for you. Just to say, here's a piece of text. This is about um, looking for work, mean looking for work, an old study I did some years ago. And you read it through, it begins to identify passages. Now, bear in mind, these are quite short, and you don't always identify quite such short passages. I've had to do it to make it fit on the screen, um, but normally your passages you might identify could be much, much longer. So it could be, in fact, the whole of that could be one passage. Okay. But you might start reading it and say, well, actually, there's an age contrast here, contrast between the, the man who's talking and the young fellows in the village. So you mark that as an age contrast. So that's what's going on in that short section of text. A bit further on, there's a residential focus, um, the, the, the village, um, and we might say that's, that's what's um, being coded there. And so on, the young finding work easily, a bit further down, and a code, those few lines. Word of mouth, another method of finding work, looking for work. Again, mention of that, and so that passage is marked. A contrast with that, um, contrast situation here, so we mark the whole of that passage, a bigger passage in this case and so on. Now you can see that what we're doing here is saying this particular section of text indicated by the bracket is given this label, the code that's going on. So that's coding that text as about that. So that's, that's some indication of what's going on in that text. There. But we can do other things too. Um, oh, there's one on the bottom. Uh, we can highlight with the uh, highlight pen if you want to. There's no reason. People don't even do that. They highlight text in various ways. They use colour codes to make it Thing. So that code could mean contrast situation, and you can highlight the text to do that. Of course, the problem with using a highlighter pen is if you want to overlap, like I've done here, where you notice that a passage can be both a bit of word of mouth and a contrast situation, um, or even here, that for example here, where the resonance focus is overlapping with both of those. Now, in that case, of course, you've got a problem with the, the, the highlighter pen because you've got to highlight in two colours. You can't do that all at once. So some other, you have to figure out some other way of doing it. Uh, that highlights. Um, but so if you're just using it occasionally, that's not a bad idea. Okay, so apply the codes to the data and try to apply them in a consistent fashion. So you probably need to have some kind of definition of the code. So once you've got a code idea, um, so back to 
these ideas here. You might want to have definitions against them. So word of mouth, you might say, this is where people talk about uh, getting work by word of mouth, by talking to friends, relatives, etc. So some kind of definition of it. Sometimes. Um, and then, of course, identify the text which, which matches that definition. Um, just, to, just say, again, the point on that the illustrator I've given you is very, very short passages. Uh, you can do that, there's no reason why you can't code just a few words, but it usually makes more sense, as we'll see in a moment, to code much longer passages, several sentences, maybe a whole paragraph, as being about something like that. A very fine balance here, which I'll talk about uh, in a slide later on, between the length of things that you code. And it does depend to some extent on whether you're using software or not. Um, if you're using software, shorter passages do make a bit more sense um, because you can always look at the context once you've recovered something. If you're not using software, that's, that's much harder to do. And also note what I've said about passages may overlap, that's typical. There's no reason why a passage in, the, in your interviews or your transcripts can't be about more than one thing, can't be coded more than one way. Um, and that's, of course, quite typical. When we're doing things, we're doing more than one thing at once. We're doing this, we're, we're, we're doing it in this way, we're referring to this context, and so on. So there, there's no way, no reason why it can't be coded in several facts or even 